Welcome to Digital Electronics Lecture Series. I, Professor Hitesh Dolakia, is going to explain you what is clock signal and how we use clock signal to have a triggering of sequential circuit. So, first I'll explain you what is clock signal and what are the parameters which is there with clock signal and then I'll explain you how we can provide triggering to sequential circuit by using clock signal. So see, clock signal is used in digital circuit and you will be finding clock signal is a square wave. So it will be as per square wave, you can see it over here. Let us say this is what CLK clock signal. Now, if you observe this clock signal, then in this, during this time period, you can say this is what T on time period. Why the reason is during this time period, output is high. And during this time period, output is low with this clock signal. So we can say this is T of time period. And total time period, T of plus T on, that is T. And based on this, we can define some basic parameters, which is there with clock signal. One is duty cycle. So duty cycle, that is T on divided by T. So duty cycle of clock signal that is T on divided by T. Usually in digital electronics, we use duty cycle by 0.5. So in that you will be finding this T on that will be T by 2 and divided by T. So that is what half. So we can say that is 0.5. So in most of the cases you will be finding we will be using 0.5 duty cycle in digital circuits and second important parameter that is frequency so frequency that is 1 divided by time period t right so duty cycle and frequency will define operational speed and transition of state in sequential circuit now to understand operational speed and transition of state in sequential circuit, let me draw a basic block diagram of sequential circuit, which I have already explained you in my previous video. So let me draw it over here. So if you observe in a basic block diagram of sequential circuit, we have memory and to trigger memory, we need to have clock. So with every memory used in sequential circuit, we need to have triggering by clock signal, right? Now see what will happen when you give clock signal to memory state of this circuit will change. So what is state of the circuit output of the circuit is defined by state and that state will change with respect to clock signal. Right, so we can say transition of state that is happening by clock signal. So operational speed and transition of state that is defined by clock signal. So one should know this of output of circuit is defined by state and output of state will change with respect to clock signal. So output of circuit is defined by state and output state will change with respect to clock signal right now i'll explain you how many types of triggering is happening by clock so basically there are two types of triggering with clock one is age triggering clock and second is level triggering clock so and in age triggering again there are two categories positive age triggering and negative age triggering and in level triggering again there are two categories positive level trigger and negative level trigger so basically there are two types of clock age triggering and level triggering age triggering is again having two categories positive age trigger and negative age trigger and level triggering is even having two categories positive level trigger and negative level trigger. let us try to understand this by practical example so here i am drawing a clock signal now see in this clock signal 
when clock is raising from low to high means at this instant clock is raising from low to high you can see so when clock is raising from low to high this is referred as positive edge triggering now see when clock falls from high to low at that time if triggering happens means during this time period if triggering happens then that is referred as negative edge triggering now see when clock is flat so at that time level trigger will happen and when clock is high at that time positive level trigger will happen and when clock is low at that time negative level trigger will happen so during this instance you can see clock is high and flat so during this time period if triggering happens then that is referred as positive level trigger and you can see during this time period clock is flat and low so during this time period clock is flat and low so that is referred as negative level trigger now here one should know even by symbol how to represent all this triggering so for example if i have memory over here let us say we have sr flip flop so in this sr flip flop if i want to represent clock signal by positive edge trigger then i need to represent it by this symbol so if clock that is there as per this symbol we can say it is there for positive edge trigger so let me mention it over here see if clock that is there as per this symbol it is there for positive edge trigger if clock that is there as per this symbol then we can say see this bubble that indicates it is negative edge trigger now see for clock if it is shown by simple straight line right so that is what level trigger and if you have simple straight line directly like this in that case we can say this is what positive level trigger and if clock is represented by simple straight line and bubble in that case it is referred as negative level trigger so these are the symbols that one should know the reason is i have seen because of very minor mistake students are making false calculation in problems right so these are the symbols that one should know based on that in future i'll explain you how those triggering that is been used in flip flop so in next video i'll explain you what is the difference in between latch and flip flop and based on that we can initiate sequential circuit with flip flop i hope that you have understood this video thank you so much for watching this video please do give your valuable suggestions